Okay, everybody, let's go through and um, have a look at the rubric that we're going to use for this project. Um, if you are in the spreadsheet document that we had just been in, uh, you can go down and click on the presentation rubric tab, and it should pull up this page. Uh, this is the rubric that Mr. Foley and I are going to use to um, assess your presentations and uh, when, you, when you give those. So you can see uh, across the top here, we've got different categories. The categories are in column A. There's a description of what is required in column B. Uh, column C gives the actual point values that we're gonna be using. We're gonna use a, a three point scale. Uh, there's column D is our comments. And over here, uh, column E has weights and F would be the final points. And uh, so one thing to take note of is that not all of the categories are weighted equally. Some of the categories have slightly higher weights because there's a little bit more to them. Okay. Uh, the th let me just say something about the three-point scale. Um, as, as we go through this rubric today, uh, the three points have, uh, have a definite meaning. So if you scroll down to the bottom of this page, you'll see what we're going to use uh, for each rating. Uh, a three means it's complete, everything is correct, and it's awesome. Uh, a two would be that it's complete, but you've got some minor errors that are happening uh, in what you've presented. Number uh, a one would be it's incomplete and or it has some major errors. And a zero would be that you just didn't attempt it. Okay, so that's what those mean. That shouldn't be a mystery to you. Uh, let's go back up and quickly run through the different things that you need. I don't know if I'm going to read these in all, in all of their detail, but I'll just highlight things. Uh, the title page, of course, has to have a title, a date, your class, um, your names, and some type of relevant and engaging graphic to put into that. Learning targets. Uh, your group is going to come up with three learning targets that describe new conceptual knowledge that your audience should learn from your presentation. The targets should be as challenging and specific as possible, and they shouldn't be trivial or vague. So you're going to think like a teacher here and imagine um, you know, what types of things do you want your audience to learn from the presentation. And I want you to be really specific about it. Okay? So don't just say that you, have, you want you know, a learning target would be I can learn about the physics of the violin. You know, I want it to be more specific than that. See what you can come up with um, that is a little bit higher level uh, learning targets. And you'll have to have three of those to put in there. Uh, at the end of your presentation, the audience will evaluate your presentation based on your learning targets. So put some thought into them. Uh, the next category is the instrument. And um, you know, this might be a slide in your presentation. You'll want to identify the type of instrument and the reason that you chose it. Uh, identify the category or the family to which the instrument belongs and explain why it fits into this category. And you'll want to include a detailed picture or a sketch of the instrument that shows and labels its basic components. Notice that you need to uh, be citing some sources on this slide or on these slides. Okay, So this might be one slide, it might be two slides. Uh, you, I do want you to cite sources when you um, are doing the work. And those sources basically can just be put into the slide as links so that I can click on those and see where you got the information. Okay, so that's how I'd like you to cite the sources. Uh, you do not need a works cited page at the end of this presentation. In fact, I don't want that. I'd rather have you put the links right in the slides. Uh, the next category is the history. So you're going to be researching just a short over historical overview of the origins of your instrument and its history. Okay, so you probably have to do some research on that. Uh, please find several modifications that have been made over time and explain why they were made. And I'd be looking for two references for the history. The next section is a big one. It's the physics of sound production. Uh, this may take you several slides to do. I don't know. It might, you might be able to do it in one. But what we really want is for you to describe the fundamental physics of sound production in the instrument. Accurately explain all the relevant physics concepts, including what is the basis for the natural frequencies of vibration? How is the sound amplified enough so that others can hear it? Does resonance happen? And if so, how are standing waves and harmonics relevant? 
So there are a bunch of things that are in here that I'd like you to make connections to. We haven't talked about resonance yet, but we're going to talk about it on Friday. So that will help you with that component of it. Otherwise, these are terms that you should know about. Uh, please include a diagram and um, cite your references in this section. The next section is the dynamic range and tuning. Uh, you want to correctly state the full range of frequencies that you can play on this instrument. You also want to talk about what a musician would do to make adjustments to those frequencies, in other words, to tune the instrument. And you want to explain the physics behind what the musician would have to do to make those adjustments. Why do those work? Uh, the frequency analysis. This is going to be something that you can do at home or you can do at school when you come back from break. Uh, you're going to be basically playing uh, different notes from the instrument into a microphone, which could be on your cell phone, or you could use microphones that we have in class here. And you're going to be looking at the frequencies that the instrument produces and analyzing those frequencies. So we'll probably talk a little bit more about this um, at the end of this week. This is kind of an experimental part. This is the part where you're going to need someone to bring the instrument and play it and play several notes on it. So uh, we'll talk more about that on Friday. You can do this on your cell phone. You can also do it here at school. So, so this is something that you probably won't get any start on today whatsoever. But we'll talk about that more. Uh, a couple things about the presentation itself. Uh, you know, basically, are your slides, um, are, they, are they good slides? Do they communicate the information without being just overloading the viewers with information? Is the grammar correct? Are your citations included as active links? Okay, because we're looking for that. And um, did you use the Google Slides format, et cetera? Uh, also, you share the presentation with Mr. Foley or myself. So basic things. And for the presentation, uh, these are the things you usually do in presentations. The speaking parts need to be shared. The presenters need to be facing the audience and speaking loudly. Uh, your presentation should be about five to eight minutes long. And we'll talk more about that as we get closer to the presentation dates. And presenters are going to be responding to questions with informative and knowledgeable responses. So as an audience member, you are going to be expected to ask questions you know, throughout these presentations. So you should expect to get questions from people when you're presenting. And I'll be you know, listening to the responses that you give. OK, so this is uh, just an overview of the rubric that we're going to be using. And um, as you are planning, you know, your presentations and your research, you want to kind of keep this document available so that you can check to see if you're doing the things that we're looking for. Uh, when you work today with your team, I guess the first thing you're going to have to do is to, uh, is to decide who you're going to work with. You're working in teams of two or three. The uh, substitute is going to put up a spreadsheet or share the spreadsheet with you that has names in it. So the first task today is to find out who your group members are going to be. Afterwards, you're going to have to figure out what instrument you're going to pick. And uh, with the time that you have remaining in class today, I'd like you to just start going through and, and figuring out how you guys are going to tackle this. Who's going to do what? Um, you know, what's, uh, how are you going to organize your work on this project? Okay. Uh, if you're able to, you could even start doing some research in class today. But um, you definitely want to have a game plan by the time you leave today. So at this point, um, we're going to let you guys go ahead and do what you need to do to, to form your teams. Um, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.